Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, to be honest, having heard the Prime Minister delineate all the plans that the money would be used for, and I listen with utmost attention to the Minister of Education, and of course, the wealth of knowledge came from the mouth of the member from Viewfort South. Experience, you know, I think we got a uh, decision in experience. It was never my intention, Mr. Speaker, to cause any kind of unintellectual indentation in those uh, presentations that came before me. But you know, Mr. Speaker, I was awoken by some noise. Some noise, uh, Mr. Speaker, I dare say that came from an empty vessel and it provoked an, the, the compunction to at least set the record straight in a few regards. First and foremost, Mr. Speaker, I want to compliment the Prime Minister and member for Castries East for having the foresight and not taking the cue of the former administration because he knew there may be difficult times when the speaker may be absent and the business of the people have to continue and in that regard he said he is not conducting the business of government without a deputy speaker and today we are able to proceed so mr speaker that is at least one lesson that the leader of the opposition ought to learn then he said he reminded us that tomorrow is valentine's day and guess what I want to send my love to all the beautiful women in St. Lucia. But the member for Viewfort South, being the fox that he is, said to all women, and you know in a very conniving way, the leader of the opposition would say now, all women are beautiful, so he meant everybody. But that was not his intention, because he is the very one who on radio, on national radio, blamed single mothers, the very women to whom he wants to send love today. He blamed them for the state of criminal activity in St. Lucia, even threatening to dispossess them of their children. Now, Mr. Speaker, I'm not the best of orators. I am no English teacher. But I've never heard any word called mefo what's it? Mefo mephology? I have heard of methodology. So I don't know if that's what the leader of the opposition wanted to say. Neither have I, I know of any word verification. I know of a verification. Tomorrow is not Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. So I just felt I needed to make those observations before I go to the gist of my contribution. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition has the audacity to say that this government has no plans and nothing they touch. Anything they touch, nothing happens. I am indeed amazed, Mr. Speaker, that that kind of claim can come from the mouth of a man who in 2016 took the economy of this country as the best in the OECS and when he released it in 2021 obviously against his will it was the worst in the OECS he took it from best to worst Mr. Speaker Mr. Speaker, he took amidst difficult time, amidst difficult time, Mr. Speaker, our rental expense as a government was about $30 million a year. He doubled it, Mr. Speaker, in a five-year stint. He took it from 30 to pretty close to $70 million a year. And in the interim, Mr. Speaker, 
renting five offices from his father when he held the chair of prime minister you know and this is a man who says nothing happens mr speaker nothing happens mr speaker he alluded to the the economic review of last year i thought that the prime minister and the statisticians had disclosed an early copy of the 2023 2024 to him but obviously not because i've heard him speak about that before but never he has never done it when he was in office because it served as a good stead it served him in good stead but today everything he tells you is that the statistics are just estimate or guesstimates he spoke mr speaker about us having no plans and he did not see this and he did not see that i want to say this mr speaker the last administration had absolutely no care no favor no general inclination to ensure that we have a more educated electorate a more educated population unless there was gain to be had by persons within the administration and i'll explain we saw mr speaker that allocations under the united workers party government were made allocations mr speaker under the united workers party government were made for a private school chtti a private school run by the wife of a minister in government that was the only time there was a semblance of emphasis on education in the same vein mr speaker the university of the west indies proposed to the then government that they are desirous of transforming sir arthur lewis community college into a full-fledged university and there was no reception on the part of the last administration to ensure that this transformation happened which invariably would have redound to the economic advantage of this country they told you we we are not prepared to deal with that you know what you did they ran to antigua and antigua embraced them they gave St. Lucia the first opportunity because St. Lucia has the largest economy in the OECS. We have the largest economy in the OECS. So they came here. But because the last set of persons that run the country showed total apathy in relation to the education of our people, they let you go mr speaker any establishment any school any learning center that brings with it the reputation of the university of the west indies will carry with it economic advantages that are too numerous to mention taxi drivers property owners supermarkets vendors persons with apartments in barbados i lived in one in one stead and almost every house there every house in close proximity to Kville campus have apartments each and every one and persons actually live on the university but here we had a golden opportunity a golden opportunity and it was permitted to go it was permitted to go and today you want to come and talk about as though you have this passion for education 
Mr. Speaker, how can a leader of the opposition have any passion for education when he being on a political platform rather than telling persons who he intend to attract to vote for him rather than telling them I will provide you with an opportunity to upgrade your education or that of your children he'll say to them I know you are good at taking care of horses I know you are good at taking care of horses so it was Mr. Speaker that was the kind of you know the total disrespect and disregard that our people were seen in the eyes of the leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I often say I really dislike liars. And it reaches a point where I often say sometimes, whether it's right or wrong, I hate liars. But for a man who has carried, who has carried the mantle of prime ministership of this country, to stand in this august chamber and to be lying so blatantly as we say colloquially mr speaker so crevche so crevche an eight-year-old building saint jude which eight-year-old building let's set this year to say building that saint jude kaya twelve that's a building no you can just fit to let saint jude bwile Yo kwaze tout bagay ek yo vie fe tout se building na se mouna ki ka di zot la dat gouvernman sa la ka servi yo building ki kat wive lane sa se oma chos. It is not true. And he keeps repeating it Mr. Speaker. He keeps repeating it. He repeats it with a passion. Et ye o building. Mr. Speaker the question is the question is, had this building, in fact, they, are not, they were not one building, they were 14 buildings. If any building was eight years old, why on earth did he get two of them that cost the government and people $7 million? He just destroyed them. He went in there and he put a, 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 an excavator in two recently built buildings. That cost us seven million dollars. You know, the same way, Mr. Speaker, he demolished custody suites. You know, he demolished custody suites, and it, it's costing us over four million dollars to build it back. On the eve of an election, whether he is smart, semi-smart, or otherwise. He demolished a bridge in Sufre on the eve of an election. Well, the Sufre people had him to pay for it. He paid the price and then did his political purchases in Miku South. He, <laughs> he bought what he had to buy to ensure that he found himself in this chamber. He demolished it. He demolished police headquarters and it hurts me. You know, Mr. Speaker, you used to be on Bridge Street and you'd hear the melody of the police band. And whilst you walk, you even want to dance. Oh, how sweet they sounded. Today, I'm not saying if the building needs to be demolished, you don't put preparatory mechanisms in place, demolish and rebuild. The man demolished police headquarters and up to today we don't have the semblance of a real police band they are all over the place guess what some of them are in it his father's building you know how can we do something like that you are not ready to rebuild central police station you demolished it and have a police station on bridge street that is logistically inconvenient how can you have a central police station on Bridge Street? That is the main thoroughfare in the city. You know? And today, this is the man who wants to talk. This is the man who wants to talk. Well, I'm using where he demolished the thing as a car park now. That's the only use I could put it to. 
He has absolutely no moral authority to speak on anything. When you talk about crime, Mr. Speaker, and he went down that road, so I have to speak on it a bit. You compare what this government has done for the police vis-a-vis -vis what he did. Any little piece of equipment that the police needed under his reign, the, his wife would hold balls. They would hold balls to generate the relevant revenue to buy stuff for the police. And I can say this, Mr. Speaker, because I saw it overtly. The member from Swazel Saltibus had to be modeling. He modeled, Mr. Speaker, to raise funds for the police. You know, you know, taking um, taking ministers of government to member, go and model. Member for Castries Central. Yes. Can we redirect your contribution to? Yes, Mr. Because. Speaker. It was it was the member, the leader of the opposition. <laughs> it was the leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, who spoke about crime. He spoke about crime. So I am telling you, and he was the one who said everything, there is nothing we do. That makes sense. Oh, the modeling, yes. Oh, the modeling, yes. You have to respond to the police, your wife holding balls to buy stuff for the police. Balls, eh? She was holding balls, response. Having the member. I remember the member for Grozile at the time, you know, in Hills, in Hills, we, as a minister, modeling. But today, we treat the police with respect. We treat the police with regard. And the police, since the assumption of governance by this administration, have received over 50 new vehicles, Mr. Speaker. Over from motorcycles, and we held no balls. No balls at all, Mr. Speaker. So don't come inside of here, Mr. Speaker. Don't come inside of here and pretend you have the moral authority to speak about anything. You know, you don't have the moral authority to speak about anything. Mr. Speaker, a lot of the monies of this country and today we have to borrow because if our monies were not squandered, if there was less corruption, probably the Prime Minister would not have had to move that motion. Mr. Speaker, in 2017, in 2011, sorry, 2010, St. Lucia enjoyed the highest rate of freedom from corruption in 2010 under the member for Castries North. We were 71 out of 108. The member for Viewford South took over in 2011 and he kept it at 71. It was kept at 71 throughout the five-year tenure of the Labour administration between 2011 and 2016. Mr. Speaker, when the United Workers' Party came in in 2016, our Freedom from Corruption Index stood at a high of 71 out of 100. But guess what? In 2017, it, plum it plummeted downward to its lowest low. 40, making 2017 the most corrupt year in our history. Let me repeat that. 2017, under the leadership of the leader of the opposition, as prime minister, we dropped by 31 points. 2017 was our most corrupt year in the history of this country. And in came Pip. In came Pip in 2021. We took it up at 45. In 2022, Member for Castry Central, Mem you refer to the member as member, member of Castry East. I guess I've been colloquial, and I, I permit me the latitude to at least be a little colloquial in this honorable chamber. Remember, you will refer to the member as member for Castry East. Very well, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> yes, when the member for Castry East came, 
he took it from 45 low in 2021 in 2022 it went up to 58 and in 2023 we are now at 59 we are an upward trajectory mr speaker in terms of freedom from corruption we are going up and up and i'm hoping by the end of the term for us to get back to 71 where we once were so when you see and you know mr speaker we are doing this for schools we are doing this for students we are doing this to better the lives of people and at some point the leader of the opposition will mention ojo labs so point i have my difficulty with that i have my difficulty with that a foreign investor comes here and we spend five million dollars to retrofit a building for him we are paying his workers and he repatriates his profits I have my difficulty with that, Mr. Speaker. I have my difficulty. With, and guess who's the lawyer? He wouldn't say. Mr. Speaker, on the point of order, the members... What is your point of order? The members misleading the House. How is the member misleading the House? The member is suggesting that the government was paying the entire salary of all of the Ojo Lab workers. They said that we paid for the retrofitting and we paid for their salaries, mm. which is not true. We only paid a very small portion for a year and a half, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> So, if he's going to say that, please have him do it correctly, Mr. Speaker. Um, member, member, member for Castries South. Members, Mr. members, Mr. Speaker. Members, the member for Miku South. Um, if my memory serves me well, the member for Castro Central said that we paid $5 million to retrofit a building and we paid salaries, we paid salaries for, he did not say, I did not take that statement to mean that we paid the salaries in entirety. Ah, so yeah. him saying that we paid salaries, I don't take it to mean that we paid the salaries in entirety. And Thank by you, your Mr. own admission, member for Castro Central, and by your own admission, I think it's fair to say that we paid part of the salaries. Go ahead, member for Castro Central. You see, Mr. Speaker, what, what he's good at doing is qualifying and quantifying and coming under the guise of a point of order. If I were to be repetitious, I said he spent $5 million to retrofit a building. He was paying salary for workers. I will not even say who the lawyer was and all profits were repatriated. That's what I said. That's exactly what I said, Mr. Speaker. I know what I'm talking about, you know, Mr. Speaker. Because, you see, there was this thing about foreigners in this country. You come here without anything. Today we have to borrow money for our people. And that's a just cause. It is a just cause. We are borrowing money to elevate our people. But foreigners came here. Look at thousand acres at a dollar an acre. Thousand acres at a dollar an acre. And even in an agreement, you know, the audacity of some people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition asserts that we are using CIP money to fix our roads. The intention of the CIP proceeds, Mr. Speaker, is to elevate the standard of living of our people. That's what the intention is. That's what the intention is. But guess what? We are using it to fix our roads. But you agreed. You signed an agreement together with your compatriot to permit T.O.R. King to sell passports, to put the money in an overseas account to which he alone had access. You know, Sisa Pao Kwefche must have kissed you. There no problem. In your problem, you can serve the agent passport to the citizen to the regime. Let us vend the passport to the citizen. We are going to do the same thing. But we are going to do the same thing. 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 You know, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Honestly, 
And this is the man who says the government has no clue. The record of this government, Mr. Speaker, in education, in education, in the first two years, Mr. Speaker, this government gave more scholarships than the last administration gave in five years. That is the record. That is our record. Laptops, we brought it back. You know, Mr. Speaker, not too long ago, again, the hypocrisy of this man. And I couldn't go through the computer, Mr. Speaker, because something held me back. But again, artificial intelligence will cause me one day to go into the computer because I saw the man showing off educational supplies. <laughs> educational supplies. And to say the future of our children must be protected. Huh? The future of our children must be protected. That is the same man. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? The benevolence of the member for Castries East is what has him now behaving the way he's behaving. I heard Brad, the, the member for Swazel one time saying, I get 100,000 a quarter. So that's 400,000 for the year. That will equate to 2 million for the term. 2 million for the term. How much did you give any of the persons who are in opposition then? Zero. You know, you should be ashamed of yourself, man. Because the resources of this country do not belong to you. They belong to the people of this country. And they must be equitably shared, man. You know? Your minister, your, 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 your colleague, he's bragging how he's getting $2 million for the term. Absolutely nothing to opposition members, you know. And today, today, and when I saw those educational supplies, I said, oh my God, that member for Castries East, because he made an allocation, he made an allocation to him as well. And Mr. Speaker, when we came in, we started the housing program. Again, we didn't have to go and borrow money. We started the housing program. And guess what? The leader of the opposition's letter was on point. He allocated every single penny. And the first set of checks that left the treasury were checks for the leader of the opposition under the housing allocation. You know, put in people first. And then you will open your mouth and say that the gov nothing is happening. Nothing is happening, but you can show a road. You today, you can show a road in Tiro Shemiku. For five years, you were prime minister. You never did the road. You awaited the benevolence of the member of Castries East to give you an allocation. And then you do the road and you post it on your page. You post it on your page. <laughs> I showed it. I have it, you know. If you want me to start showing screens of, of all the education, they gave you an educational supply. You know what he did, Mr. Speaker? He took his educational allocation and buy laptops. And the children are bragging, oh, Mr. Sharp, they buy us laptops. I'm, 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 I'm quoting here, Mr. Speaker. You know, not realizing... It is the member for Castries East that gave him an allocation, something he never did. You know, at some point, Mr. Speaker, I dare say I'm a sinner. We all are. And Romans 3.23 says, for all have, John 3.16, sorry, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I will, I will face the maker one day. But... There are some people, when you face the maker, he will ask you, just disappear in front of me. The wickedness that you have shown to the people of this country, the wickedness that you have done to the poor people because the constituencies did not support you. You shall pay the price at some point in time. So, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you know, I could go on and on about squandering our monies and if we had those monies. We came in, came here to borrow money to pay who? Cayman Group. You know? K 
Cayman group to move from one hospital to another over two million dollars over a million dollars a month sorry it was 25 million dollars for two years and if i'm wrong the minister of health can tell me you know why are you doing that to our people we don't have resources bring in a cayman group and pay them 25 million dollars for two years man why why did you take our 7.3 million dollars and, and give it to the man for vaccine why why and we've not received all of it back yet why don't you have a conscience man don't you have a conscience isn't your conscience talking to you why would you take 32 million dollars and give lokobi what did you brought lokobi here for we did not need lokobi same way you brought hepal we did not need hepal we can run our affairs and today you pretend you have authority you go to england and because it's taxpayers paying the money you stay in a hotel for two thousand pounds a night you think that's justice man on poor people you think that's justice on poor people you come here or anywhere take the government vehicle you start it from the time you leave your home until you go back home because you're not paying the fuel do you do that now do you do that now and it's only facts i'm confronting you with so you have no moral authority to speak on anything. So he said, oh, it's skin, his skin, his skin. You know? You ever hear the member from Castries is, unless it's a call of utmost urgency, have outriders, we want, we want. Every day with you on the radio, we want, we want, we want, we want. So, you know, those things hurt. Because it just says, Mr. Speaker, that whilst we are here borrowing and fighting the cause of our people, our average people, some of them, unfortunately, we are fighting it in vain. We are fighting it in vain because you know what, Mr. Speaker? Some of them, you know, when they swallow that yellow Kool-Aid, they lose their ability to rationalize. They lose it. And so, Mr. Speaker, I will wait for another turn because, you know, and look at the rates we get in that. Before you come in, Mr. Um, <laughs> you know, the fellas have got an airport loan. Over 15% on the airport loan. Huh? One man making all the money, he said, just send me the bills, and he had in 7% on it. The country was bleeding. Bleeding for the first time in history and i want you i want a member for for miku north for miku south to tell me when else has any commission been paid on a loan and if you want to talk about transparency tell the people of saint lucia who got that commission and who authorized the payment of that commission you were minister of finance you know these are the egregious deeds financial deeds that the people of this country have had to undergo and sadly mr speaker even if they dealt him the lethal political blow on july 26 2021 the remnants of his behavior are still being felt throughout the length and breadth of saint lucia mr speaker i'll take my seat without before say, without forgetting that i need to endorse this loan if i could endorse it 40 times i will endorse it 40 times because this is truly in the interest of our poor people and that means we are indeed putting people first thank you mr speaker